Well, that was going to be my next question, Kevin. Why has this, this ideology persisted? Why is Marxism... I mean, Marx was a fairly... Uh, I guess he was a good intellectual on some levels in a technical sense, but he was a fairly unimpressive character. There's not a lot of... Uh, of, 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 of things to aspire to to be like Marx. He wasn't an inspirational leader. He led a life of uh, dependence upon others. Uh, he had a pretty miserable time of it from, from what I know of his, his background. Yet these ideas have persisted through the most, hor the horrors of the 20th century, and they continue to capture the, the imaginations of young people in particular uh, in their early 20s at universities and things like that. How has it been sustained for so long? How has such a weird philosophy not just been tossed out? Uh, when I looked into this in doing the research for, for cancel culture, I came across Michael Gove, a, a British uh, mm. member of parliament, a conservative. Yes. Yeah. And Michael Gove wrote some years back that what happened during, and I'm talking more recently now, during the late 60s and early 70s, those people who were old enough like me will remember, it really was a cultural revolution in the West in terms of moratoriums, uh, Woodstock, flower power, hippies, make love, not war, uh, the Vietnam moratoriums, as I've mentioned before. So if you look at that period, in terms of Europe and France in particular, where students at the Sorbonne in Paris took to the streets, what Michael Gove argues is that in the West, a lot of Marxists understood that there would never be a revolution in a physical sense. People were never going to take to the barricades. Workers were never going to uh, unite to overthrow capitalism. So a lot of uh, thinkers, academics, including uh, Alcazar, Bourdieu, if you go back a bit further to Gramsci, Antonini Gramsci in Italy, what these academics argued is the way to overthrow Western culture, capitalist society, was not through violence, but through what uh, was termed the ideological state apparatus, which are schools, universities, the church, family. And what Michael Gove argues, and it's very true, other people have said it, uh, Roger Kimball in America makes the same point, that the cultural Marxists took the long march through the institutions. And the reality is now, I was probably one of the few uh, or the last of that generation that went through school and university during the, the 70s and 80s, where you were able to get a good education, a liberal education. For the last 40, 50 years, schools and universities have been dominated by cultural Marxism. And the way it's taught, there's never any rec recognition of the nihilistic nature, of the destructive nature, of how appalling it is. So all young people are now getting is this very positive view of uh, cultural Marxism and that they should be woke.